If your CPU is overheating, and by that I mean either reaching T-junction or reaching a temperature that is so hot and unsustainable that the system just cuts off, you've come to the right place. See, a vast majority of CPU overheating issues come about by one of three means, either improper cooler mounting, dead fans, or in the case specifically of an AIO, a dead pump. And in this short video, we're gonna talk about ways to check for these issues and prevent them in the future. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds, and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. Now I know I've got a mess off here to my left, we'll get to this in a second. I wanna talk first about fans because fans are probably the most obvious thing you can check, the most obvious things to fail as well uh, in a build that could potentially cause your CPU to overheat. And even in this case, your graphics card, if we're on this topic, uh, if your graphics card fans are not spinning when they should be, uh, then your graphics card will overheat. It will severely throttle itself in order to save itself from potential catastrophe, from, from destroying either the GPU or the memory or whatever might be getting hot. Uh, but in the case of the CPU, especially if you have a fan like mounted to a fin stack, maybe it's just a tower cooler, uh, or even if you're using an AIO and you have fans mounted to your radiator, these need to be spinning in order to displace that hot air that's being dissipated by whatever fin stack is around it. And I'm sure you can imagine just how hot things will get when the fan is not turning in cases where it should. We've done similar tests on this channel before. A few obvious signs that fans are dead. Obviously, the blade's not spinning. You can also check to see if you have connected your fan properly. I have seen this more than once where people have just completely miswired fan cables. There is a key, right, uh, to make sure that you're wiring this into the correct pins, but I've still seen it where people have just like completely missed a pin, which will totally throw off the connection here. Uh, the fan won't spin as a result. You could potentially kill the fan if it's wired a certain way. And, and so that's the other thing that I would really emphasize here. Make sure the connections are sound. If your fan is relying on either SATA or Molex power for whatever reason, make sure those connections are sound as well. If those aren't connected, fan's not gonna spin, you'll have a bad time. And on that note, one more thing you can do to better fine tune fan RPM is hop into your BIOS and enter the hardware monitor section. This will allow you to change fan profiles according to CPU and motherboard temperatures and the like. In more advanced motherboard BIOSes, you can actually tweak to very fine detail uh, how fast you want fans turning based on whatever specific component you're referencing for temperature. Uh, so in this case, the BIOS is rather primitive. We don't have too many selections here, uh, but it is worth noting. You can also use third-party software in Windows. You can download that and that might allow you to uh, tweak fan curves as well. Uh, but I like to do everything usually in the BIOS because it sticks right away and uh, I don't need to run third-party software in the background to make those fans turn at whatever RPM I decide. Now, believe it or not, another very common reason why CPUs overheat is improper cooler mounting. Now this issue can admittedly be a bit difficult to diagnose, especially with your motherboard in your case. If you don't want to remove it, you're not going to have the best vantage point, but you might be able to turn your LED flash on your phone uh, and then look through the top grill of your case, if your case has a top grill, and you want to check the space between the base of the cooler, which is the cold plate, and the top of the CPU, which is usually the IHS. It's a large metal heat spreader. So we're talking specifically about this gap right here. If light from your phone flash is passing all the way through this gap, that means that your cooler is not properly mounted and it's effectively doing nothing. In which case, you want to check all mounting points, make sure that things are screwed down, hand tightened, torqued as far as they will go. Refer to your cooler's manual to make sure that you're doing things correctly. Also check the back plate if one is included with your cooler. Make sure that it is sitting flush against the base of the board. If it is not, then your cooler could be sitting slightly crooked. That's enough to cause a CPU to overheat. And of course, if your cooler has fans, which most do unless they're passive, and I would recommend passive coolers for a lot of higher TDP CPUs out there, you want to make sure that your fans are spinning when the power is turned on. And yet one more thing you could be doing wrong is applying too little thermal paste. The rule of thumb is that if you aren't sure how much you should be adding, always add a little more. The grain of rice method usually works for most Intel CPUs. You can see that it spreads out rather evenly when applying a lot of pressure. If you're using a Ryzen CPU, you wanna add a bit more, maybe go with the X method instead, it tends to spread out a bit better. And if you're going with some HDT chips from Intel that have much larger heat spreaders, you'll want to add a bit more than that. But if too little thermal paste is applied, 
applied, you'll have little gaps between the IHS and the cold plate of whatever cooler you're using, and that will result in significant heat buildup. It'll actually heat up your entire CP more, not just that small little section, make all of your temperatures run much higher, could result in severe thermal throttling or just outright system shutdowns. Now, in the case of an AIO, there are a few other things to consider, most notably the fact that a pump is involved. Ergo, another failure point. See, all-in-one liquid coolers like the Zinzi-XT Z63 rely on pumps to transfer fluid from one part of the loop to another. Either water or glycol solution will absorb the heat from the CPU block and transfer it to the radiator while fans will help dissipate this heat to the atmosphere. We call these radiators, but in essence, it's convection. So these are convectors, is that, is that a word? But the big problem with a pump like this is that there's no way to tell when it's dead just by looking at it. Whereas if a fan's dead, that's pretty obvious, right? The fan blades don't spin. If a CPU cooler is mounted incorrectly, that's pretty obvious, right? It might be sitting crooked, there might be a gap between the cold plate and the IHS. That's pretty obvious. But this, this isn't. Now there are symptoms of a dead pump. Maybe your system is just randomly shutting down in the middle of gaming. Maybe you're getting random blue screens of death. Maybe you're getting some strange artifacts or some really weird lag spikes all of a sudden followed by either a shutdown or a blue screen of death. All of those things can indicate that your CPU is getting too hot as a result of a dead pump. And that is no good. But you might be thinking, well, Greg, is there some kind of like built-in warning, some kind of mechanism that will let me know when pump RPM drops to zero, like it never should when the system's on? Uh, as far as I know, there is not. Now there might be something baked into some third-party software. It might be in CAM software from NZXT that I'm just not aware of. I've never had an NZXT IO that I can recall die on me. I've never had a pump fail from them. So I, I don't know if they have that built-in alarm. I think they should, especially if it's monitoring pump speed like 24 seven and you have CAM running in, the, in your task manager or your, uh, your system tray, it should tell you when your pump dies. Uh, so if that's not a thing, I definitely think it should be, but I can speak from experience, at least historically, there aren't many software suites out there, at least there weren't, uh, that would let you know when a pump died. And that's why I had so many friends, so many family members in the past talking to me, asking about why their system is overheating. There's no, there, there, there are no clues. There's no symptoms. It's just, it's just cutting off randomly. It's getting too hot, folks. Nine times out of 10, I'd say your system is just getting so hot that it's deciding to turn off power to save itself from further damage. My goal is not to scare you away from AIOs. Again, I, I love AIOs. I, I think there's certainly a place in the market for them, and that's why so many people use them. They run very quiet, uh, they're very stealthy, and in the case of the Z63 here, you can customize the heck out of them, which is really cool. But you need to know going into this that there is an additional failure point that air coolers do not have, and that is the inclusion of a pump. Most of these AIOs actually utilize a very similar Asetek pump, and maybe a few exceptions with chamber design and the like, uh, and there are even fewer exceptions of AIOs that do not utilize Asetek uh, pump designs because Asetek has a huge patent on that. Uh, so they've they've got it down to a science more or less. I mean, they know what they're doing, but the problem is there's only one company out there to choose from and they are certainly not without their flaws. Asetek pumps have been known to die in, within even a few days. Um, it, it's a rare thing. If it was not rare, nobody would buy these because the failure rates would be just through the roof. Uh, but Again, it's something worth considering. Um, unfortunately, just a, a fact of life with water cooling. You have to have a pump involved. And if you have a pump involved, that's another moving piece that can potentially die. But if your CPU is overheating, there is one very effective, very simple test you could do. You just need one hand. You need to grab both tubes. Do this with your system on so that your pump is receiving power, being careful not to touch other moving parts like fans. Yes, jamming your finger into a moving fan will friggin' hurt, okay, ask me how I know. Grab both tubes, you should feel um, a bit, something like a, like a vibration, right? You should be able to feel fluid moving through the tubes. And that will only happen if the pump is functional. Now, if you don't feel anything, you don't feel any fluid moving up or down these tubes, that's an indication that either A, your pump has died, or B, you didn't wire your pump correctly. Now, a lot of these pumps are powered via SATA power, so you wanna check that connection. Uh, if it is powered via three or four pin fan cable, you wanna make sure that it's first off plugged into a header correctly, and then also check your BIOS and make sure that you don't have that header turned off in the hardware monitor tab. If you can confirm that your pump is working, that's that's a good sign means you probably don't need to RMA your AIO, but it probably also indicates that either a fan is dead or two, maybe you didn't mount the CPU block correctly. That could be another issue, which is why we brought it up earlier in this video. Uh, or again, it could be a simple wiring issue. That said, in general, yes, it does become a bit more complicated with AIOs, but at least now you know what to look out for. You know about that failure point and you know how to check it. It's very simple to do. And if you're wondering what it feels like to have a working pump, if you have an AIO right now and your system's running, go ahead and just hold both 
little tubes. You'll know what that feels like. You'll, you'll feel that fluid. You can feel it moving up and down the tubes. That's what you want to have. And if you ever notice that that feeling suddenly disappear, that means your pump is dead, my friend. And one more thing while we're here, make sure that your fans are on, they are connected and that they are turning. You cannot have an AIO without fans unless you're doing something as crazy as DIY perks where just like fans are obsolete, right? <laughs> Most of the time you're going to need some sort of active cooling and that's where the fans come in. So make sure these are turning, otherwise you'll still get that overheating problem. Your system will still probably shut down. Now, obviously there are other reasons why a CPU could be overheating, but I feel like we've covered the big three in this video. Either it's user error by improper cooler mounting or a fan or a pump has died. Maybe those products arrived DOA and you just didn't know it because you expected those products to work out of the box. So keep your boxes at least until the warranty expires in the event that you need to claim an RMA. Now there is the off chance that it's the CPU itself. I've seen it before where it's just a bad chip. It just runs way hotter than it should. It's, it's extremely rare though. Most of the time the CPU itself will not be the thing to die. It'll either be the motherboard or the power supply, or again, like we said, the pump or uh, a fan or two. The motherboard you'll want to check as well. If a motherboard is overvolting the CPU, maybe you have a blown MOSFET, something affecting power delivery, that could affect CPU temperatures drastically. Make sure that your vCore, if it's set to auto, uh, make sure that your motherboard is not, you know, just dumping way more voltage than it should toward the CPU, especially if the CPU is not being manually overclocked. I've seen some boards do that. So check the vCore setting, uh, and if you need to, just manually set it to something rather conservative, maybe 1.1, 1.2 volts. It depends on what CPU you're using, and there are plenty of forms out there that will tell you where the safe voltages are for stock and overclock runs. Now, I've never run into the issue where the power supply is the reason why the CPU is running too hot. I'm sure somehow, some way, it is possible. If there's anything I've learned in five or six years of doing this, it's that pretty much anything you can think of has probably happened at least once in the PC space, but um, it's probably as rare or more rare of a thing than the CPU itself dying or being the cause of the overheating issue. So with that, I hope this video has at least kind of pointed you in the right direction. If your CPU is running insanely hot, a lot hotter than you think it should. Now we're not talking, you know, 70, 75, 80 degrees under load. Those are safe temperatures for pretty much any modern CPU on the market. But we're talking 92, 94, 96, even 100 degrees or whatever T-junction is for your SKU. That's that's pretty dangerous. Let's say anything above 90 degrees Celsius would would raise a few red flags. I'd either need to clock back my CPU, maybe reduce voltage a bit, or I'd need to check the, the method of cooling I'm using, seeing if that's actually enough for whatever CPU I'm trying to cool. Um, you're not gonna get away with using a super low profile compact cooler on something like a 10900K or a 5950X, unless you're willing to do a bit of tweaking in the bio. So uh, be mindful of that as well, obviously, um, if, if the cooler is not rated for whatever TDP your CPU is rated at, especially if you're overclocking, um, just don't try it. But at the end of the day, I do hope this video has made troubleshooting a bit easier for you if you're experiencing this. If you're not experiencing those symptoms, um, thanks for watching this far into the video anyway. Uh, maybe you run into it in the future. I, I, I pray and hope that you don't. But if you do, um, yeah, maybe you'll be a bit more prepared this time around. Again, the simple checks with the tubes and the AIO, um, check your fans, check your cables, um, check your fan curve setups in your BIOS as well. There are so many different variables at play, but more often than not, it's either a user error situation where the cooler is mounted improperly or just something that is kind of on the DL has died, like a pump. And unfortunately, it's one of those things that you're really not gonna realize is happening until it's too late. The good thing is a lot of modern hardware now will shut itself down before anything catastrophic happens. Uh, with that, if you guys wanna leave a comment down below, I would appreciate that. Let me know what you wanna see next here on the channel. Be sure to give this one a thumbs up if you thought it was cool, dislike for the opposite effect, and uh, consider subscribing if you have not already. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me.